What's it called this week? <laughs> so Terry's looking after the program and the Call Family Project, so we're going to let him uh, kick off the meeting today, and you'll hear from Jay as well on the website, which is the main focus of our meeting today. Okay, okay but we'll start on the Call Family Project update, please. Thank you, Terry. Oh, uh, never mind. You go ahead. <laughs> I don't need permission to leave to go to the washroom. <laughs> Most of the subcommittee members know the team uh, members are with us today. So I do want to introduce one new team member. Uh, Ade Ades Wasomo has joined us uh, as project manager for the call handling project. Uh, Ade brings significant experience in implementing call handling systems and joins us from the recent successful implementation in the Waterloo region. So we're very pleased to have him join us, not just with experience in the technology, but also experience in the municipality. So you very welcome in addition to the team. He's been with us now two days. It's the third day here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. welcome. And I've heard the project is very good. My, I've spoken to my colleagues in Waterloo and, uh, and uh, as with anything, the trials and tribulations were worked through in a, in a timely manner and certainly from a political standpoint in Waterloo, they're very pleased with the, uh, the implementation. That's the that's feedback we had as well. We had, we had a big fair amount of uh, checking uh, references and, and the feedback we got uh, both in the project and in audio was it played a big role in that, in that project. Uh, Waterloo, as you know, was a little different in that this was their first call center. So uh, they had some different challenges than we all have, but a lot of similarities as well. So um, in addition to, to, to uh, the people listed on the screen here, um, there are a number of other individuals who are working on projects we're very dedicated to ensuring that these service improvements uh, are made for the city and the projects are, are delivered as promised. Um, I'm listening both to call handling and the, and the web team groups together on the slide to hide that while our visits to subcommittee usually focus more on one than the other, uh, these projects are very integrated and we want to emphasize the ongoing coordination and integration across the projects and across the other city channels for the city as well. Um, Terry, I think it's also good to highlight as well that Kirsten is the project lead now that Verna Radford has retired. So we're the last to have Kirsten to well, finish May 16th. Thank you. So here's a high level timeline of the two projects that focus on improvements to, to the two service channels, web and phone. And it's maybe difficult to see some of the details on the screen, so let me just walk you through it. Um, what we want to high regarding the web project is we're well underway with, with phase one of the, of the project and it will be coming to GIC later in June to provide a further update to all council and it will be, it, be able to introduce the preview of the new website uh, at that time. Uh, Jay will in a moment give more specific details and status of the project for you. Um, the cult handling project is also making significant progress. Uh, the team is forming and the RFP is losing the mission. We have uh, over 20 uh, respondents pick up packages, so we're looking forward to a, to a robust competition and, and uh, a good selection of products for us to choose from. Uh, we expect responses uh, back in late June and we'll have uh, completed the uh, evaluation and we expect demonstrations of a small number of vendors in July. Um, so after today's meeting, We'll be sending an information update on both projects to all council. So we look forward to your advice at the end of the meeting. Uh, see if any specifically you think that your council calls you want to know in today's presentation. So with that, I'll turn over to Jay. And Jay. Well, just before we leave that, so any specific questions with regards to the call handling component? I'll we'll just come back to it at the end, but anything on the call handling? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. And, and if I can, uh, uh, through you to, to staff, can, can you just recap and refresh my memory on the <coughs> timelines behind the whole call handling project? Yes. So the call handling project uh, was scheduled to be 18 months uh, from time of approval, uh, which was in, in February. The RFP is, is uh, uh, taking a little longer to get done than we expect, but we can make that up as, as the project goes forward. Um, we expect that we'll have the uh, Software chosen by in the summer and implementation this beginning. summer. This summer, yeah. implementation beginning in the fall. We have a schedule of seven phases of work. The first phase being transitioning of the uh, existing call center, 500,000 calls into new technology, and overlapping that will will be following with, with the six phases of work, bringing in the, the new calls from 20 call areas over the remaining uh, 12 or 13 months of pilot. 
Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. For the questions, anyone at this time? No? Okay, sir. Continue. Uh, great, thank you. So, thank you, uh, uh, we have a relatively short presentation for you today, uh, basically previewing or discussing uh, three main items. Uh, of course, the visual design concept, the updated visual design concept based on your feedback from the last meeting. Uh, we're going to talk about how we're preview releasing the uh, new website over the summer period and just talk about a few next steps that are upcoming. So, at our last uh, subcommittee meeting, uh, Councillors provided some great feedback to us, and we took that feedback back to our design vendor and, and worked on the design concepts again. Uh, some of the main con uh, feedback that we heard from you was wanting to emphasize the uh, city's brand image, uh, so that we made that great first impression when visitors visit our homepage for the city website. So that was the main area of our focus for, for uh, the work that we did with the design. But there were other things we were doing as well. Uh, we talked about the logo treatment, so wanting to see that, that word mark Hamilton in a much larger uh, framework when you, when you visit the homepage. That required an extension to our brand identity guidelines, so we've been working on that with our communication staff. We also looked at improvements to navigation and social media, placing social media icons at the top and bottom of all pages now, uh, trying to drive continued interest in our social media properties. And there were a number of other changes as well, more on, on our side of things in terms of technical changes and changes to support uh, the AODA compliance work that we were doing. So uh, we've also met with uh, you individually with, with Mike, uh, uh, support from communications to understand more deeply your desired changes to the website. This is the uh, new prototype for the home page, and you can see the larger word mark at the top of the screen. Uh, the word Hamilton, it's a bit small on this screen, but it actually shows up uh, much nicer on when you're looking at it on a, on a computer or a tablet device. But that main hero image in the, in the center portion there, and uh, this is very common on many websites. You see that hero image when you first visit a website. This hero image is the brand building uh, images that we want to use to engage visitors and really talk about the city's priority projects and initiatives. Uh, the, really, the really positive aspects of the city building work that we're doing. So we will continually update uh, those images uh, on an ongoing basis. For the preview release, we are looking at five images. So there's five images that fit into this carousel nicely. And I'll talk a bit about those in a few minutes. Below the uh, hero image, you see the top tasks. That was the piece that was at the top before. And we still want to use that because, of course, it is an important navigational aid for citizens who are trying to access our services. So that remains uh, an important aspect of the home page as well. Each of those areas are where a lot of the traffic for our website goes. And it's a little hard to see here, but they're, we're pulling out the top tasks that citizens want to perform on our website and putting them right there on the home page so that if a citizen continue, bookmarks our home page, their top tasks should be on that home page at all times and they can easily access those services. We also made some changes to the navigation at the top. I'll talk about those in, in a minute. Uh, just below the fold, uh, just below the screen here, uh, you will see an interactive public meetings and consultations calendar right on our home page. So of course this is something that's uh, been requested by councillors in the past to see all of our public meetings centralized in one place and presented on the home page so citizens who are looking to engage with, with us through these meetings and consultations have that information at their fingertips. So on to uh, our website structure. Sure, just go back. To sure. Can, can, we, can we ask questions and comments on ask each one as we go along? Then? Anyone? What jumps out at me? Bottom left hand corner. More tickets. <laughs> parking and lots. Um, you know, I think it should be parking and parking lots and tickets rather than emphasizing the negative with that more tickets. So, uh, did we forget about Hamilton, Ontario, Canada? Uh, is this Hamilton, Bermuda? So we worked quite we worked quite a bit on that the concept of um, Ontario, Canada, and we've been looking at some research about how best to use location support for technology to to use that. So the Ontario, Canada is actually built into the title of the pages, which you don't see in this particular okay. view. It's also going to show up prominently in search. We'll be using what's called metadata to help Google and other things understand location. So we should be able to differentiate technically in terms of that. The, the other thing is we're working on an, act, an aspect of the, when a visitor visits us from outside of the region, we sort of want to broaden the region a bit. 
they will get a different treatment, a slightly different treatment that promotes, are you looking to visit, are you looking to invest, or are you looking to move to Hamilton? That treatment will emphasize the Ontario Canada aspect of things. We'll probably use a, a map as well to sort of place ourselves where we are in the globe. So we are still working through that concept, but just not necessarily in the mark of the Hamilton logo. Judy? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, you did mention on the images, you are going to go into more detail on that further on. I'm going to assume that there's one of the waterfall in there somewhere. I'll wait for you to address that. Um, and under meetings, which is under the fold, as I understand, um, does that include the posting of all meetings, including subcommittees? Uh, through the chairs, yes, it will eventually. We're working on the subcommittee and uh, meeting okay. portion of that. As, as you know, you've heard at council before, there are the, the subcommittees beyond the clerks that we're trying to think about how best to present that information. So we are very committed to getting that information on the website. Right, thank you. And uh, this is a perfect example of a subcommittee exactly. in the, the website development, which uh, you know, I think residents are interested in, in ensuring that those are listed as well. Thank Absolutely. you, Mr. Chair. Maria? Just uh, touching on what Councillor Parker just saying, just about the photographs. Um, I, I assume that we'll be able to, obviously, this question of waterfalls. We certainly would get some nice shots of the front of our city hall, too, at appropriate times of year. I mean, they do a tremendous job with the uh, horticulture at the front of our building. And uh, I think we should emphasize that, welcome people to, you know, our city hall. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? The other one that I've seen on most of more recent ones is, like for example, the Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you click on that, it does two things. It pulls up a, uh, a Google map, so in other words, so it's kind of a, the broad one where it kind of positions it in Ontario, and then you can kind of drill down to, and the identifier is, is the city hall in both cases. And the other thing is got uh, what the current weather is. So in other words, you, uh, you can readily uh, in, enroll with the Weather Channel or Weather Network and that, that actually pulls up what the current weather is in the, in the community at the, at the time. That's an easy action. Judy? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I, I completely forgot this, but you did, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, you did mention that we were going to have the um, uh, Facebook, Twitter uh, icons and LinkedIn. Is that what's right at the very top in the gray that you can hear the see? Yes, you got this small image. You can hardly see it when it's on the home page. It's much more prominent when you visit it through a browser. Okay. And did we, um, at some point in time, I seem to remember a discussion about having the, the Twitter feed actually appearing on the screen somewhere. If you could just comment on that, please. Uh, through the chair. So the, the comments about the images, so you're mentioning a lot of images around photo gallery of the great parts of Hamilton. Uh, the uh, Twitter feed and the weather are all pieces that we're working on. So this first image you see here is called Explore Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk in a few minutes about how these will link to, to something at, okay. at some point. What they link to in the case of Explore Hamilton will be something that is about all aspects of Hamilton. And we'll look at how the great hospitals we have, great education, photo galleries, the weather that we have here, and some interactive Twitter feed elements. So we're bringing that together as, a, as an interactive space on our website called Explore Hamilton. Yeah. I, it's primarily targeted around people who may be interested in visiting or moving here. So uh, we're looking at, of course, the immigration portal work that we're doing and how we can encourage newcomers to, to, to uh, move here, we're looking at business and how we can encourage them to invest here. So that interactive element is something that we're working on. will not be available out of the gate for us. So initially, these five images will link to a basic page for the June preview release, mm -hmm. and then through the summer we're working on building those interactive spaces where, where we can then create more engaging and dynamic information. For and you answered my next question, which was the temporary or the, um, the pre-release, which was going to be June 2014. That's right. So I talked about that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Beth? I was just going to comment, some of the questions um, are talking about getting into the preview release. So. Um, it's really important that you, what you're seeing here is this is a, an important foundation for us to build on. So uh, your questions, I think uh, Jay can answer all of them in terms of what look, the preview site looks like, what the full redesign looks like, and what we have the ability to move forward with. So it's really, this is the design concept, um, and I think you'll be pleased at how that is meeting your needs and how we can build on that for the future. We're just trying to be helpful. 
Yes, but it's, it, it is, is very helpful. helpful. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you had the context of um, what this is, that we're moving forward with this as the uh, foundation, and then we can continue to make improvements and tweaks as we build out the site and get into the, the full design. Further questions on this slide? Uh, I think some of not many of our questions but further things are built on the uh, further slides, which I please continue. Yeah, and just to, to give the subcommittee credit, your feedback has been very helpful. I mean, we haven't lost sight of any of the things that have been requested. We definitely continue to work on those. It may not all be on the home page. We're trying to find the best way to technically build those and, and to be able to manage them on an ongoing basis. So if they're always fresh, they're current, they're engaging, because that's, of course, how our website falls into that disrepair state that we don't want to fall into. So your feedback is very helpful. So as I mentioned previously, that our website is uh, built into four levels. So one of the principles of our website that we're improving upon is that we're trying not to go too deep into the website because that's how our content or grid information services gets lost in the page. So this is our second level uh, beyond the home page. It's called a bundle page, and it's basically a collection of services brought together in the way that citizens. So, so, Jay, so if we were to go back to the first page and we were to click, no, no, don't go back. Okay. So, so <laughs> if we were to hit the button on the first page that says HSR Transit, then that would take us to here. That's right. Okay. And the, the four navigational elements at the top, this is a pretty standard a way that municipalities often carve up their websites. So, basically, one focused on citizens, one focused on business and investment, one focused on tourism tourism and uh, immigration, and then, of course, the legislative process in the city hall. So the, those 22 to 25 bundles that we're working on building together, each one of those will appear in one of those navigational menus. So that's one way that they could access the bundle, and as Councilor Powers mentioned, they could also access it through those service tiles on the home page. And if they got to this uh, page, uh, the service bundle, the basic features of this, of course, a left-hand navigation showing services within that bundle. HSR Transit is a pretty uh, uh, bundle that's pretty defined. So of course it has a pretty standard uh, service alignment. But other areas bring uh, services across our departments together in one bundle because of course citizens might view water as a public health or public works or even an economic development uh, project. And so we're bringing those together so citizen, from a citizen and business view. <coughs> Uh, there's, of course, a breadcrumb trail just below the HSR transit wording there, and of course that's an important navigational aid for citizens to move around the website. And that promo box that you see currently showing the Presto card, each one of the bundles will have a promo box, and just to the left of that, the top three tasks within that bundle area. So again, we're always trying to drive to those top tasks that citizens are trying to perform to make it really easy for them to get to the task. Just below the promo box, uh, which again is an area that will continue to update with important communications messages to support citizens, you see service tiles, and those link to the next level of um, our navigation. And uh, basically repeating the concept that we're always showing the top three tasks to help a citizen find their way to the next thing. So the next level is our service uh, landing page level. So sorry, just back. Sure. Back to you. Any questions or comments on? this level of detail. When we come back, I'm going to come back to HSR Transit, and I just want to raise an issue about the, the verbiage and stuff like that, but we'll make a note, we'll come back to that one. Okay. So this level, the bundle level and the service level, are basically navigational levels to help the citizen on the path. And so you see on, on the service landing page level, we again have the promotional uh, features at the top there. And on the left-hand side, you see a navigation. It's broken up into two sections. And, and this is, again, a simplification that we've done, an improvement over our current website. We have at the top the navigation within this section. So if you think of our website as a funnel, we're funneling a citizen to that center point that they're trying to get to. So in each case, if our navigation can, can continue to point downwards into the site, it will help them find, find their way down. But below that is what we call other services available in this section. That's a navigational aid to help them move around if they've gone down the wrong path and they can work their way back up the path. So it's, it's a small detail, but it's a really important detail in terms of supporting citizens who are navigating. And of course, we hear navigation time and again is a very challenging thing on our existing website and citizens can't find anything. 
these improvements will help citizens find those, those tests. And the one other main feature of this area, it's a bit, uh, scrolls down below the fold there, but in that purple services at a glance area, we, this is an area where we are helping citizens understand the complexity of our information in very simplified ways. So as an example in this area, the fares for HSR Transit, there are actually quite a number of levels of fares. There's student fares, senior fares, we have some subsidized fares. Uh, the Presto card is, of course, a, a new development that we need to help citizens understand. These area, this, the area uh, in the purple area there going down are what we call teasers to help give a little bit of information about those individual things to help a citizen understand whether something is right for them. They may look at something, the term Presto card, and not even be sure if that's something they really should think about because they may not have heard of it before. So that teaser will give them a bit of information to help them understand each of the areas within that section. Questions, um, anyone? Okay, thank you. The final level uh, we call the basic page. Uh, so this, of course, is a, a, a content page. There's actually, we call it the basic page because we have a suite of pages that uh, our design vendor has been working on. So I mentioned photo galleries before. We have online forms, a number of interactive elements that will be different pages within the site. So we have a, a suite of templates that we can choose from. But basically, it's a page that shows the information, hopefully answering the questions that citizens might have about a particular area. One thing you can see across those four levels is, of course, the consistency across of those. That's an important aspect of our managing our brand and our image on the website. We want that experience using any part of our website to really be part of a, a whole experience that is very consistent across the board. And uh, the information we've mentioned before, the volume of information on our website, currently we have 6,500 pages and, and over 40,000 PDF documents. We're actually going through each one of those pages and many of those PDF documents. We're rewriting, reorganizing, simplifying the language that's used in each of those areas, uh, to an import, which is of course important when you're working with uh, newcomers and immigrants who may not speak English as a first language. And, and, and generally making it accessible for all Hamiltonians. So we look at the literacy level, the tone of voice that that's written in. We want it to be very approachable. Um, you know, if we're talking about that parking ticket area, it may not be a pleasant area necessarily, but we can still talk about it in ways that engage the citizen to at least seem fair and to um, provide good service when they are doing when they are undertaking that uh, unpleasant uh, task. So uh, it's, it's been a lot of work, it's a bit uh, behind the scenes, it's hidden, but the results I think we will be very proud of when we uh, actually preview and release this information because I think we've done a great job as a municipality of really trying to manage this information well. And hopefully this will uh, set us apart and distinguish us in terms of having a really great website we can be proud of. I think uh, I'll stop there. Okay, questions? Anyone? Uh, sorry, just one other point about this one. It's a bit below the fold again, but there is a section below. You can just see the beginnings of it there, the, the green and purple. Those will be related links and related content. So one of the features of the technology we're using is really to create very connected uh, information to help the user. Maybe this page answered their question, but they want to read more about a bylaw that might affect this page or other material. Those links will be provided at the bottom. So it's really created a very connected website for us, and we're excited to actually be working on that piece. So uh, I think that's all for the design in terms of um, the, the work we continue to do. At this time, we are working with, uh, we've moved, uh, the design vendors finishing off their work, and we're moving on to another vendor who's actually implementing it in our technology, uh, to Jen, who has worked with the city uh, previously on investing talent and tourism was the uh, successful proponent for the, for the recent uh, procurement we did. And uh, they're working currently to implement this. This is sort of the last mile for our pre-phase one work is to actually get that design and now implemented in the technology that we procured. So we're excited to be moving forward on that. Can you go back to slide six? Sure. Oh, sorry, six. So questions and comments on anyone? Um, mine is on HSR Transit is all of us know that it's HSR, but maybe not a lot of people would know that it's HSR. So the question I'm just raising is, is it best that it's called HSR Transit or do we put maybe the HSR logo, you know, with just the terminology Transit on it because um, 
it may be helpful or not for people going to going to that. So I'm just I'm just placing that as just a, a rhetorical question. Um, the ones with regards to tickets and parking, I think I think it's best to build on the positive rather than the uh, the negative. So you know, uh, uh, parking parking lots, uh, um, parking violations. Um, you can put tickets, everybody knows that it's tickets and that. But you just, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and very clearly, that more tickets, parking lots, I think that needs to be. <laughs> it can be arranged if you so wish. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, for the chair, I mean, you raised a really good point. We're actually getting into lots of uh, heated discussions about this back at, at the office because uh, the terminology is really critical to helping citizens find things. And, and a great example is in uh, our waste garbage and recycling area. Actually, the term garbage and recycling was the dominant terms that people use. And so calling our program waste management is not, it's a disconnect, right? And we refer to them as community recycling centers, but the citizen that often we see in the search metrics was for dump. And so we have to make sure that somehow that, that word the citizen is using connects to the program area that we call connected to. So HSR Transit is another one where actually it's about 50-50 people that use HSR and people that search for bus schedules. So they don't include the, the HSR terminology and it probably represents something in the community in terms of awareness of that history. We, we, we are, that's one area that we're focusing on. However, we are working with the transportation area who are also thinking about how they the terminology that they use to describe their whole transportation program. And we wanted to sort of be in, in lockstep with them and align with their work and, and not necessarily jump ahead of and presuppose any outcome for that area. Uh, so, but we will behind the scenes make sure that the, all the terminology that's appropriate in each of those areas it works. Certainly the, the case of uh, tickets parking, and, you know, I think that's a good example of where we want to try and massage it to present it a little better, but also make sure those connections can be made in the background for citizens. Before we go to my other colleagues, under parks and recreation, so you've got the three bullets there. So under the more parks and recreation, does it go to facilities? In other words, so so it says parks, it says recreation, but where do you find you know arenas and, and things such as that? So is that in the drill down information there, Jay? Yes, uh, the so each of those, the, the the high level terminology will probably not change too frequently. Uh, you do see a little scroller there to the left and right, so this is an area that there actually is more uh, that we can scroll through and include. Seasonally, we'll work with these and actually adjust, adjust them a little bit so that things are in the right place at the right time. Flu, get, flu clinic schedules are not important in other times of the year, but certainly in November and October, we try and emphasize those. So we'll be able to, to move these around as appropriate. The tasks within each of those will adjust based on season as well. So in this example, it's public skating schedules, of course, might be something winter oriented and then we might focus on outdoor pools in the summer or splash pads. So we'll be able to work with those and, and uh, group them around as appropriate seasonally. Okay. Parks and recreation is another example where uh, the program actually crosses departments. So recreation is primarily in community services, parks primarily in public works. But the citizen view of that is parks and rec. It's such a dominant terminology. Yep. And so that's an example where we bundle those services together, try and eliminate the idea that the citizen has to understand our work structure. They shouldn't have to understand that to be able to access the information in the way they need to. So. Judy? Uh, yeah, just very quickly, um, Mr. Chair. The, um, I agree with the, the uh, adding in trends that they are, are, are finding a language that is understood. Uh, particularly for new folks moving in, you know, in Waterdown, for instance, I have a lot of residents who are coming from Brampton, they're coming from Milton, they have no idea what HSR is. When they called into Allison and she has said, you know, we'll go on the website to HSR, and they said, well, what is that? You know, what is HSR? So I think what we're looking to grow our ridership, which is something that we absolutely have to do, uh, growing the ridership, we can't, we can't assume that anyone who has not used the transit services in Hamilton will understand what that, what that HSR is. So I think, you know, looking at it from uh, new ridership, but also for new residents that are moving into our community, uh, certainly in Waterdown, we're one of the fastest growing areas. So just to keep that in mind, thank you. Maria? I just wanted to go back to um, Jan, the pictures that will come up. If you clicked on, I guess that you can scan and the bottom ones would be the ones that will come up as you scan That's the right. record. Will there be identifiers as to where these locations are at all? Uh, good, good question. 
Yeah, the chair is currently open with that, but that is an interesting thought to, to make sure we do that. I think uh, how we would do that is probably once you link to the section, we might have the image repeated in a smaller version, and then we can put a caption on it that uh, indicates what the picture is. It's a good point. The other one I want to add is at the very end, you've got more jobs at the city. Why don't we just put more with the air? I mean, is there a reason for replicating yeah. the thing? Is because I mean, it's right under the thing. If you just put more with the uh, with the advance arrow. Um, through the chair, there is a reason, and it's for AODA, uh, for the compliance, because okay. what will happen to a screen reader is it will just read more, 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 uh, and not actually say what's behind Thank it. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of those compromises, not compromises, I mean, we want to be as accessible as possible, but a lot of those things sort of govern how, you know, the deep, fine details get governed a lot by that. Anyone else? Well, if I could, Mr. Reed, can I just ask? The information is going to be when you link to say tickets and parking. That's going to be pretty well standard for what we have now. So if there's any issues as we go forward, we can raise that with the various departments, or do we come back to you as saying we need to fine tune the information that's in each of these categories? And the reason I'm asking is, say for tickets, I mean I still have residents that question the parking ticket being that yellow, the yellow mm -hmm. strip that comes out of the machines now, and whether you know. Will we show that when we get to that link? Will we will we advise residents that you know it's not just a matter of the tickets read out or printed out? A lot of times photographs are taken and they don't realize that. So when they want to challenge these, I always tell my residents just be careful what you're going to challenge because pictures are taken. And I don't know if that information is in that in that link when you get there. Uh, through the chair, so uh, again, great, great questions. Uh, so as our team is working on um, developing the information, the content that we're giving all those uh, those pieces of content, oftentimes we actually create really great brochures here that have something simplified and really for people really easy to understand the, the concepts. And unfortunately, in the past, that information and that simplification hasn't made it to the web. So our web is often more complex and not as detailed and doesn't provide that helpful information. Because we've got a lot more space to work in. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, so we're trying to, um, all of those uh, the brochures, our team has reviewed all of them. Uh, they're, they're, what we've done is pulled together team members from across our, from across departments to, to work on the content so that they are familiar with their areas and they kind of know the questions that get, get raised a lot. So uh, that work has been underway to ensure that we actually answer all those questions up front. And another area that we'll be working with our call handling um, colleagues on is collecting data that the contact center gets questions about often. Uh, so that we haven't quite gotten there yet, but we'll be using that information to then make sure, are we answering all of these questions online? Because ideally we want to make sure that we can, over time, try and head off the phone call if, if a citizen visits us online, they should get all the answers and shouldn't have to jump to another channel to get the, get the answer. So we are trying to include all of those pieces of information. Your, your question about uh, who to speak to is a, a good one as well. I believe that Governance is something we're, we're working on in terms of uh, you know, the workflow behind the scenes and who we talk to. I think that uh, we would expect you to continue to talk to the program area because they're the subject matter experts, and then we would work with them behind the scenes to determine the best way to present that information through our various communication channels. Um, but I think they would still be your point of contact for information. Bethany. We just wanted to add to that as well that this is an important change in how we're uh, changing the way we work within the departments to think about how the citizen is looking for our information. So it'll be fantastic that we have the website as a tool, uh, having the customer contact center as a tool, and your feedback that you mentioned, Councillor Pearson, is really helpful to get that uh, back to feedback to the department. So it's going to be a really important partnership that we're building between the customer service function from the call center and the web work into the departments. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes that will be developing that knowledge and skills and understanding of thinking differently about how we deliver our services. On a recent vacation for me is uh, um, used to, you know, you go to a web page and that and you have to go through six million pages kind of to find all the information. But I noticed most recently, and some of them I printed off, because I still print them off and throw them in a portfolio, was you kind of end up with a, a summary page. So I was able to kind of print off a summary page which gave me, you know, hours of operation days and, and, and you know what you know what the fees were able to get in and things such as that. So that was a takeaway 
that I could throw into my travel portfolio on that. So it's kind of a, a summary sheet of, it still allows you to drill down into the details, but a, a down and dirty, um, you know, take, take away in that was uh, something there. Um, and, and through the chair, uh, just to, to let you know, later on, once we get the website fully launched, we are working on what we call print style sheets. So basically, if a citizen prints from the web, it will actually print nicely and formatted for, for print. And the, the value behind that longer term is that we can move towards what we call print on demand. So we won't necessarily have to print all of the brochures that we create. We can drive to web and say print that one. And it should print out in a nicely formatted way. Or, or if someone's working with staff, our staff person can go to our website and print right from the website and hand that to the customer rather than us having to invest in a lot of uh, printing. Which, so again, ideally this could drive some savings in the future if we can continue to work down. Increasingly, the airlines now, when they're going to the electronic tickets, are having something that's called a printer friendly uh, edition. You click on that, and then it, it, it becomes a, a consolidated one. Doesn't give you kind of you know, all the stuff that's kind of, once again, down and dirty. Right. Anything further than this? We'll go on to page 11, so into the Saskatchewan log. Actually, I just, so just one thing I want to show, show you here. So we've talked about responsive design, but uh, we've been finding that actually this, this helps some folks to see a demo of exactly what we mean by this. It's a fairly technical detail, but it's a really important one for us as we move towards servicing. Uh, late, we recently pulled some statistics that 38% of our traffic to our website is now coming from a mobile device. So it's just increasing dramatically for us, and that's something we really continue to focus on. Uh, serving because, of course, that how the website presents on, on mobile is very different. Uh, we've talked before about how we're also leveraging the, the federal government, and you can see their hero image, and it looks very similar to ours, and there's a reason for that is because we are actually using the same underlying technology to drive that. And the reason we're, we're focused on using the same technology to drive that is because the work that they do in investing in usability and accessibility, we actually benefit from without having to lay any cost behind that. So their expertise and their focus on maintaining a secure website is something we've really benefited from. We've, we've working with this partnership with them, um, we're finding there are some really important uh, savings, really, frankly, because we've saved a lot of time. And we also have some assurance of security built in. So recently with the Harkley virus that was that got a lot of attention, the federal government looked at all of the technology that they're using on their website to to make sure that it was uh, safe. And there actually were a number of releases of updates and patches that came out. We applied those to our website because we're using the same technology. So there's a built-in almost a security audit on our website that we did not have to invest in. So we're, we're very excited about the benefits that we're starting to see of this, uh, of using the same underlying technology. But, uh, and I just want to mention again that this technology, now that we've uh, implemented is it's free of charge. It's license free. So we do not have to pay for updates in the future. Open source software, that's the benefit. So we're now starting to realize that, that those updates and patches have no cost to us to implement. So that's a really important uh, work that we've been undertaking here. But uh, so you'll, I'll just slide this to the left and right, and you'll see the way the website snaps into a different presentation. So this is what you would see on a normal desktop. As I start to shrink the real estate, it reorients the website to work on a tablet device. And the menu then pops into this uh, little icon you see. So that menu changes where it displays. And the uh, hero image uh, becomes smaller to fit with the scale of the website. And as we continue to go down, you see it eventually snaps into a mobile phone experience. And so the website doesn't have different versions that have to be maintained. It's one version that snaps and adapts to the, to the website as needed. And this is becoming, uh, it's quite a standard, so it's not uh, that we're necessarily unique in this. But again, uh, using that, uh, leveraging that uh, underlying technology, Drupal, and what the federal government has done, all of that was built in. So we didn't have to implement any additional things. We didn't have to take on any costs to make that happen. It was all uh, built in. So these are some of the exciting things that we're, we're quite excited about. And uh, just to mention, you know, as uh, one of the stats we heard recently, by the 2015, tablet sales will surpass des desktop and laptop. So this is a, a market that definitely is going to continue to increase. And we're very excited to have a, a new website that will actually be very responsive for that. Questions, anyone? 22 font, eh? so two words, two pages. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so 
the just jump backwards here. So, uh, so now that we're uh, talking and getting into talking about how we are actually going to release this uh, website work to the public, so we uh, we have been talking, looking at a number of websites that have recently undergone uh, redevelopment, and their approach is sort of emerging as a as a best practice or a good practice, leading practice anyway, for new websites. And in the past, what they, we have done is fully launch a new website. So you make a switch and you cross your fingers and you hope that everything works to be boo and it often doesn't. And we've talked to a lot of our colleagues who have made that switch and they found, of course, that there were many problems and they had to back out and go in again. This model that uh, Saskatchewan, I'm going to show you in a second, Saskatchewan has done, is the idea of releasing a preview website or a beta website as it's often uh, termed in, in technical terms. That preview website will be available to citizens, but our existing main website will continue to be the main website that citizens visit for a few months. And the idea behind that is that when you release the preview, you can have citizens connect to that preview, engage with it, we can collect feedback on it, we can test it and make sure it's working well, and continue to migrate the content and information and services over to it. And once we know it's working really well and tightly and has all the information, then we can make that switch and we'll have no, it should have no impact on citizens because by then we will have worked out all of the problem areas that might need to be smoothed out on. So Saskatchewan has, has recently done this, so you see the two links at the bottom. gov.sk.ca is the Saskatchewan government's main website and has been, as they work on their redevelopment, their rebranding to saskatchewan.ca and that website is the preview website. And I'll just uh, show this a bit here again. So today, if I were to search for something in Google Saskatchewan Health Card, you can see the web address that's here in green is health.gov.sk.ca. So that gov.sk.ca website is still the prominent website you find in Google searches. Citizens will access that website. That website is their older website, and it looks like this. You see here this large section that they've put here, and this is the announcement letting folks know about the preview website. And so we anticipate that we'll be doing something similar on our old website. We'll have an announcement that lets folks know that the preview website is now available and encourages them to go and check that out, take a tour, and look at some of the areas, provide feedback to us. And so, uh, just look over to the Saskatchewan.ca version of this. So if I were to follow this link over, I would land on the new version of Saskatchewan.ca, which again, you can see the, the dominant messaging would work play in the government. Um, so that's the way they're treating that. And uh, this is, uh, let's see if I can do this here, is a responsive design, of course. So they are also very focused on mobile. And there's some information here that talks about uh, what they're doing. So currently 40% of their information is migrated over to this new website uh, and uh, 25 the most popular tasks. So they're, they're really trying to do a methodical, careful release of the new website to citizens and, and transition over to that um, in a way that's safe and, and certain and provides some, some uncertainties around security, privacy, and performance built into that. So we are looking at approaching the new website, our new website in the same way. We'll have that preview website available at the end of June. And over the next couple of months, few months, we will be working on continuing to migrate more and more of the information. We're actually already working on our second wave of, of migration currently. And uh, we'll want to communicate this message to citizens, to our stakeholders about the availability of this preview website because the traffic uh, folks visit that website and get information about areas that might not be working as well as we want them to be and then we can focus on fixing those areas during that preview time. Any questions on this right there? What's the transition period for Saskatchewan? What are they working towards? Uh, to be honest with you, Mr. Chair, we don't know. We, we, don't, we only follow what we see on right. public right. air, so okay. we, haven't, unless we don't necessarily know the timelines behind the scenes. The, of course, at the provincial and the federal levels, we know the federal government is doing the same thing, so Canada.ca is their new brand for GC.ca was their old brand. The department websites continue to be migrated over to Canada.ca. Their timeline was to the end of 2016, but of course it's a much, much larger undertaking and 
in that level. Uh, Saskatchewan, um, we don't know, but we suspect probably sort of, we would suspect it's a multi-year project for them as well. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, so uh, we will be sharing information about the preview release with you and, and hopefully you're able to communicate to your colleagues as well because we, we do recognize this is a complex concept to understand. You just need to almost see that Saskatchewan example to really uh, get, get what we're talking about. We definitely want, want people to understand uh, what we mean by the preview release. So. Uh, just to let you know what we are working on. So our website, the preview website address will be preview.hamilton.ca and will be available throughout the summer. The five services that we're currently working on transitioning are the uh, city priorities and initiatives. So that's the linkage to the hero image on the main homepage there. So that will link to that section. We're looking at, of course, all of the information in council and committee. The reason we focused in this area is because of the high AODA compliance requirements in this area with all of those documents. So there's a large legacy archive of, of history there that we have to do a lot of work to, to migrate over. And of course, as, uh, as elections come, it's uh, an important area where people may be interacting more with the information about council and committee and, and the mayor and council's offices. Animals and pets, garbage and recycling, and the HSR transit, of course, three of our main service areas, and that's why we focused on making those uh, three of the uh, preview release bundles. So there will be the, the five in June, and we'll continue to be, uh, as I mentioned, there's 22 to 25 of them we're working on uh, through to September. We'll be migrating and releasing those as they become available. Uh, so, just a, a brief, I mentioned I would talk about the hero image in a bit more detail and just show you some examples of the ones that we're working on. So that hero image, we call it a hero image, that's the standard uh, terminology for it, will include the Explore Hamilton feature that I mentioned, as well as other city building initiatives initially out of the gate. These will be updated regularly, we'll be working with our communications uh, staff to understand what uh, your priorities are and what the city's priorities are in terms of communicating to citizens about those big projects. And each hero image will link to more information and interactive features, although initially we have the preview release, it will, will just be to the basic information to start. And here are five examples that we're working on. So you see in the top left, the Explore Hamilton. We were looking at that escarpment view that, that we've talked about here a number of times. The other uh, four areas that we are considering using uh, as initial preview release is, of course, our waterfront redevelopment and the investments that we're making in that area. There, uh, our team in water definitely wants to communicate to citizens a number of the changes that they'll see to the landscape in the area over the next few years. Our expanding mobility choice, so as, our, as um, the bicycle program comes into effect and, and the expansion of the transportation choices, there will be some information about that. As the countdown to the uh, Pan Am Games comes, we of course want to have some good information and interactive features about that. And the immigration portal, it's actually mislabeled in that particular graphic, but the immigration portal is something that we're also working on with our teams in planning and economic development, economic development and community services. And that will be released uh, as part of the new website, uh, an interactive area for, for immigrants and newcomers to interact with. So those are the five that we're looking at out of the gate. And as I mentioned, each one of those will link to areas that could have photo galleries, that could have interactive features, uh, surveys, forms for uh, enacting services, um, maps and other uh, interactive features as well. So we're sort of excited to get into working with communications to build those out and what those might include. And we'll definitely be back to talk about more, more about what those sections will be with, with each of you so that you can give your feedback on those as well. Mr. Chair? If I may, on just on the photographs, I think you know where I'm going to go. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I would strongly suggest that we do have a photo promoting our waterfalls. Uh, we have a private citizen who's invested a great deal of time and energy over the years in promoting Hamilton as a city of waterfalls, and I would suggest that if we don't include that, we'll be slammed. Because it is a very important feature of our city, and the, uh, it, it just absolutely amazing outdoor um, you know, places that we have to explore. We might want to consider linking them to tourism or whatever would be appropriate and to be able to provide information on where those waterfalls are located. Um, you know, I just think Webster's Falls, which is where I grew up, right across the road, um, there's, I think now we're up to 168 waterfalls throughout our city. That's really something to be proud of. So I would just suggest through you, Mr. Chair, that we uh, do that out of the gate with the launch. 
through the chair, and uh, I think maybe what might be helpful is to actually, uh, at some later point, we are working with our communications team to build a, an editorial calendar, basically, around when we would promote different things throughout the year. We also want these to be seasonal, of course, because once fall and winter arrives, the pictures don't jive with reality, so we have to think about, about some of those aspects as well, and that's certainly a good point. So, because these change, hopefully, fairly regularly, uh, but these sections that they link to do not change. So I, I right. think what we need to think about is not is also having a permanent home for waterfall information. So on the Explore Hamilton, have some good detail about waterfall as a permanent home, and then we can think about uh, the timing of the images and how the date if we, if we look at uh, the waterfalls as an image. But it will change, and I think that's the important thing is that although there may be certain images throughout the year, we may pick different images depending on the priorities that you and, and the city want to come over the time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jane. So, just uh, I think uh, briefly, there's only two more slides, but just uh, one thing that, of course, we're, we're entering into a phase now is, is testing. So, we're doing a lot of testing. There's five dimensions we test on. Uh, performance, security, and privacy. Those tend to be more technical in nature. We want the website to work well and load fast for citizens. We want it to be secure so that it can't be uh, you know, hacked or taken over by malicious uh, folks. And privacy. Privacy won't be a major concern for us out of the gate because we aren't really hosting any private information in the preview release. But it's something we, we like to do anyway just to, to be sure that uh, access to our network and that sort of thing is, is prevented. And the two other areas that are citizen focused are usability and accessibility. And so the testing behind those will, will involve engaging citizens, including people with disabilities, in the testing of the information over the summer period. And we'll be back with information about those test results with you uh, later this fall. We continue to develop the uh, information and features that we've talked about and, and migrate those over to the new website. Over the summer, we'll be gathering a lot of citizen feedback and staff feedback and counselor feedback about the website and, and collecting it all. We, we probably won't respond in the immediacy, just because, unless there's some really significant things that are, that are critical to respond to. We'd like to gather a lot of feedback and come back to you with that feedback and have some good discussion about what we would, what we would act on and what we would not act on and why. And uh, website metrics and also working with our contact center around any calls that they may get from citizens about, I uh, can't find this, or I can, you know, want to leave feedback through through a telephone channel. We'll be looking to launch the full website in the fall with the replacements, so that will be the timing of when we actually, once our preview is in good shape, we'll then make the switch over to the new, uh, that will be our new website, and citizens will visit www.hamilton.ca to see that new website and interact with that. And of course, as we talked in the past, we were beginning to plan and design for those online service improvements, and particularly in those six or seven areas that we're really focused on. But we have found that with the new technology that we may have actually some, it is really easy to develop certain things like online services. And so we'll start to want to take advantage of that and bring new services online and think about that as it is the future with you as well. So, so that's our timeline to launch. And I'm just going to pass this uh, last slide over to Terry just to talk about some of the next steps you see in the coming weeks. So there's two things I'm going to leave you with before I do. Uh, I think I've been, I've been so impressed working with the team. I think we saw a lot, of, a lot of the excitement from Jay today and, and a lot of uh, features here. There's a lot more. Uh, but every day, work with the team to see the, the, you know, the incremental improvements and developments and the opportunities that really brings us. So Jay's coming up with this being a foundation is absolutely true. We'll, we'll preview something in, uh, in, uh, in June. We'll launch with something uh, more robust in the fall. But that is just a starting point. It gives us you know, lots of opportunities to go forward from there. So the two things I wanted to chat about before we wrap, uh, I want to hand out a, a fact sheet uh, pass this around. to uh, to you. Um, and as we pass them around, I want to talk a little bit about the, the uh, some of the next steps. Um, we are going to be uh, sending an page update to your colleagues uh, later this week, giving them a very very high level summary of the status of the project up to date, um, so that they have a, a, a summary of this information as well. Um, and we'll be providing a similar update to all city managers on Friday at a citywide management meeting. Uh, and we'll be coming to, uh, to you and GIC uh, on June 18th to, to introduce the, the preview site and show some of the images that we'll be able to show you today and perhaps more. Um, in, in addition, we keep to develop this, this fact sheet. Um, we want to Joe, Joe, are you okay to scan that or do you need an electronic copy sent to you? 
I'll talk with Jay on the other one trial. Okay, thank you for this meeting. Thank you. So we want to make this fact sheet uh, as useful a resource as we can for you to help you communicate key aspects of the website. Uh, and so do that we provide the fact sheet with some key bullets and some, some rationale for, for the project. And I want to just highlight what the, what the three key messages key messages are. And so as, as elevator speaking most. The preview website will be available over the summer. It will demonstrate a strong visual design uh, and image of the city, and it will feature five service bundles. Uh, the content and functionality will be added over the summer and with a full launch in the fall. And the website will provide a platform for delivery of online services going forward. And I think with those three key messages, that's, that's the summary of what we're trying to, to, to relate today. That's the summary of what we were into GIC in, in June as well as showing them the, the images. So can we just stop there for a second? Is, it, is, it, it may mean a delay of one month, but I think releasing it exclusively in the summer, um, it's almost like the purpose is, is we want to hide it because people are going to be away on vacation. So if you're going to do it, I think it needs to be July, August, and September. So your preview period, I think, needs to include the month of September in order to maximize the, uh, I'm going to call it the accessibility for, you know, for, you know, for people that are here. Yeah. And I think that's consistent that's with the, the concept. So it's a, available starting the summer, and the preview will continue until we're fully built out uh, to release the, to flip the switch and say now it's the new site. So it's actually an extended period until we're finished. Okay. But the verbiage needs to say that because what it says now is the, the summer months, and for the people, they define the summer being July and August. So the wording is the the preview site will be available throughout the summer and continue until the website is fully. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Make that change before, before we get the joy. We'll do that. Happy to have more time. Okay. Probably good. You work pretty well under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> the team is right about the team that cuts down. And really yeah. Continue, Eric. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So we're just bringing additional feedback from you in terms of key messages with, with the 12 counselors or, or going forward. So thanks for that one. I'm wondering if you have any other suggestions. Judy? Don't forget the rural communities. That's a big part of uh, Hamilton. It's a big part of our branding is the fact that, uh, you know, as much as we are a cosmopolitan city, we are very much, in fact, I think almost 60%, uh, we are rural. And uh, the tremendous... Uh, uh, role that that plays in our economic development, $1.5 billion industry is agriculture to the city of Hamilton. And I think that's uh, that's something that just needs to be reflective in the visuals. Um, drilling down that information will be in different websites, but I'm talking about visually. Um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's important. Thank you. That might be one of the visuals from Carousel, Jay, that is something that's showing a, uh, you know, the, uh, Fields. We'll go to Basuda's place, Councillor Basuda's place, and get some get some pictures. Yeah, the sunflowers, the sunflowers and combinations of that. Huge. You know, wheat and sunflowers and whatever the case is yeah. on, a, on, a, on, a, on a beautiful day, which may happen this year. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Maria? just to that, there used to be, and I don't know if you can get your hands on this stove when I was first elected way back in Moonstone. There used to be a section in our old website that had some beautiful pictures that you could scan through. There was, I think, Dunder Castle, there was the uh, soldier um, battle reenactment, there was a whole coverage, and there was the sunflowers from, um, from the plant world. So I don't know whether we can get our hands on that, but there was a lot of great photography in there. Through the chair, uh, we are working with programmers across the organization to gather as many photos as we can. We know that picture tells the story in a thousand words, right? So we definitely will have photo galleries in various areas of our website, as well as the video. Video is, of course, an emerging mm -hmm. platform, and we are wanting to have video and intera other interactive elements we are very focused on. Gathering images has been a little harder than we thought to gather some of those ones, including. Could citizens send uh, photographs to you that could be incorporated? Uh, through the chair, it's a good question. We are working on um, trying to understand some of the legalities around use of images. Uh, that's a bit of a complex area. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors in Niagara region recently uh, had a payout uh, for some use of images related to, uh, to and, you know, the details of the legal requirements are quite complex. Citizens contributed photos is definitely something we're, we're thinking about, but we want to explore that a bit more and talk about that with the legal and 
applications down there. I mean, I have pictures, I'd be happy to send the fields of sunflowers, I've got some great shots. But I have a resident in my, well, he's no longer in my ward, he used to be, and I still have contact with him. And he's done some tremendous shots of downtown Hamilton that I've, I've kept. Okay. Yeah. Through the chair, the, one of the challenging things often is when, the, okay. you know, the presentation of people, and then you have to have yeah. certain yeah. waivers. Yeah, it's, so yeah. yeah. So it's complex, but we're certainly yeah, excited to explore it, and we definitely will talk about that a bit Good. more later this year. Okay, anyone else? So I think you've made extraordinary you know, work. I'll, I think we all wanted it done yesterday, but, uh, but the reality is it doesn't happen yesterday. So there, uh, there is a tomorrow, and I think there's a reality in tomorrow. So we want to thank uh, all of you for that, for your efforts, and uh, I think we're all looking forward to a, uh, I'm going to call it a, a re-release of our, of our webpage. But I have a motion to approve the presentation. So Judy and Maria on the motion. All those in favor? Carried. It's carried. Uh, moving on to general information and other business. Um, sir? Okay, we'll leave it to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, any other items of information? If not a motion by Pearson. Um, Sorry, just a quick comment, if I may. Yep, yes, please. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to say how impressed I am as well. Uh, from what, what was originally put up on the screen, and I, you know, I think there were some some uh, friendly rocks thrown at it, uh, particularly by myself personally. So I want to take ownership of that. But um, I really appreciated the opportunity to sit down with all the team and to talk through some of the issues. And what we have, uh, uh, you know, now starting off with our pre-launch, and we, I'm sure it will be tweaked and changed as citizens have their input. But I just wanted to say, uh, you know, how much I appreciate all the work that you've done and the effort put into it, and uh, being able to participate in that. So thank you. Maria? I just want to say, there's an old saying: "You come a long way, baby." You've done, you've done a great job. A great job. Joey, we'll count on you and your like-minded colleagues in that to, uh, to disseminate this information and obviously uh, look for responses from that under the, uh, under the, the preview thing. I'm sure people will express their opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so, on a motion, so on a motion by Pearson, seconded by Parkridge, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.